The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker Have you been curious on what the book The Happiness Advantage is about but don't have the time to read it? In this video we are going to summarize the book and extract all the core messages. Hey it's Emma from 5 Minute Summary where we cover the core messages of books and contents in 5 minutes. If you are new here make sure you click that subscribe button, let's get into it. What is a broken formula? A broken formula is such that if you work hard, you will become successful, and once you become successful, then you'll be happy. We become more successful when we are happier and more positive. It turns out that our brains are literally hardwired to perform at their best not when they are negative or even neutral, but when they are positive. When challenges loom and we get overwhelmed, our rational brains can get hijacked by emotions, we need to regain control by focusing first on small, manageable goals, and then gradually expanding our circle to achieve bigger ones. There are seven principles covered in this book. Principle number one is the happiness advantage. People who put their heads down and wait for work to bring eventual happiness put themselves at a huge disadvantage, while those who capitalize on positivity every chance they get come out ahead. Even the smallest shots of positivity can give someone a serious, competitive edge. Happiness is not just a mood, it's a work ethic. What are some ways to improve your mood and raise your happiness throughout the day? You can meditate. Find something to look forward to. Commit conscious acts of kindness. Infuse positivity into your surroundings. And exercise are some ways you can improve happiness. Principle number two is the fulcrum and the lever. Our power to maximize our potential is based on two important things. The length of our lever, how much potential power and possibility we believe we have, and the position of our fulcrum, the mindset with which we generate the power to change. By changing the fulcrum of our mindset and lengthening our lever of possibility, we change what is possible. When faced with a difficult task or challenge, Give yourself an immediate competitive advantage by focusing on all the reasons you will succeed, rather than fail, remind yourself of the relevant skills you have, rather than those you lack, think of a time you have been in a similar circumstance in the past and performed well. When we believe there will be a positive payoff for our effort, we work harder instead of surrendering to helplessness. By changing the way we perceive ourselves and our work, we can dramatically improve our results. Principle number three is the Tetris effect. Constantly scanning the world for the negative comes with a great cost. It undercuts our creativity, raises our stress levels, and lowers our motivation and ability to accomplish goals. When our brains constantly scan for and focus on the positive, we profit from three of the most important tools available to us, happiness, gratitude, and optimism. Psychologists call this predictive encoding. Priming yourself to expect a favorable outcome actually encodes your brain to recognize the outcome when it does in fact arise. Principle number four is falling up. Study after study shows that if we are able to conceive of a failure as an opportunity for growth, we are all the more likely to experience that growth. The people who can most successfully get themselves up off the mat are those who define themselves not by what has happened to them, but by what they can make out of what has happened. Principle number five is the Zorro Circle. One of the strongest drivers of both well-being and performance is feeling that we are in control and that we are masters of our own fate at work and at home. Psychologists have found that these kinds of gains in productivity, happiness, and health have less to do with how much control we actually have and more with how much control we think we have. The most successful people, in work and in life, are those who have what psychologists call an internal locus of control, the belief that their actions have a direct effect on their outcomes. By tackling one small challenge at a time, a narrow circle that slowly expands outward, we can relearn that our actions do have a direct effect on our outcomes, that we are largely the masters of our own fates. Principle number six is the 20 second rule. By adding 20 seconds to my day, I gained back three hours. The key to reducing choice is setting and following a few simple rules, psychologists call these kinds of rules second-order decisions, because they are essentially decisions about when to make decisions, like deciding ahead of time when, where, and how I was going to work out in the morning. 
Rules are especially helpful during the first few days of a behavior-changing venture when it's easier to stray off course, gradually, as the desired action becomes more habitual, we can become more flexible. Principle number seven is social investment. The more social support you have, the happier you are. When over a thousand highly successful professional men and women were interviewed as they approached retirement and asked what had motivated them the most, throughout their careers, overwhelmingly they placed work friendships above both financial gain and individual status. If you enjoy this video and find it valuable, click the like button and subscribe to the channel, make sure to also check out the other videos in the personal development series where you will find more 5-minute summaries of amazing books. I'll see you on the next one.